it's me Sarah. So I am back with another cooking tutorial. Tonight I'm going to be making porterhouse steaks. I know you're probably thinking steaks again. Yes, steaks again because they are delicious. Anyways, um, I'm also going to be making some form of green beans because two kids wanted green beans and some form of corn because two kids wanted corn. So um, I'm also going to be making loaded mashed potatoes. Yum. So, um, and I think there's something else thrown in there, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but you will find out if you keep watching my tutorial. And if you haven't subscribed to me, please subscribe to me. I would love that. And if you are subscribed to me, thanks for coming to watch my video. And hit that like button and leave me a comment. Because I always love reading my comments. My, sis <laughs> my sister. My daughter is being a weird creeper right now. Let's see. Creeper. Anyways, so... I have that creepiness. I will talk to you guys later. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs>so I'm going to be making a wide variety of things tonight because I have picky eaters and everybody wants something different. So first thing I'm going to mention is I'm going to be making loaded um, mashed potatoes which I have their Yukon gold potatoes and you're going to need cheese which I'm just using the cheese that I have, bacon, and chives which I love these they're freeze-dried but they taste just like fresh chives like seriously they're really really good and then I'm also going to be using some butter and then I'm going to bake this whole thing of garlic and I will show you how I do it in a minute and then so the second thing I'm going to be making is some macaroni and cheese, but I'm going to be doing a special way to where it doesn't taste like boxed macaroni and cheese. And then third thing I'm going to be making is kind of a take on Mexican corn or elote or however you say it. But I'm using canned corn and then I'm going to add mayonnaise and Parmesan cheese. And it tastes exactly the same except for it's not on the cob. It's um, off the cob. So, yeah. And then, since some of my kids like corn and some don't, I'm going to be doing green beans with bacon for the other kids. And then the meat of tonight's dinner is going to be some porterhouse steaks. So, I believe I mentioned everything. I'm also going to be making hollandaise sauce because I cannot have steaks without hollandaise sauce. So, if you want to add hollandaise sauce to your steaks, um, you can refer to my how to make easy hollandaise sauce video and yeah So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the garlic because that's gonna take the longest to cook So I will be right back with how I'm going to do that Okay, so to prepare your garlic you want to cut off as much of the tips as you can So like and I missed a little tip over here, so I'm just going to get that one. And then just scoot that to the side. And then this can be kind of messy. You put it on a plate so you don't make a huge mess. And you just want to pour a little bit of olive oil on it. And then just rub it all around the top and everything. And then you're going to take this over to your oven or your toaster oven like me. And with it at 450, you just want to set it right in the middle and you want to cook it for about 45 minutes to a half an hour or until the garlic is really soft. And we're going to go back to the cutting board. And now we're going to grab our potatoes that are freshly washed and all the eyeballs are plucked out. And we're going to get a bigger knife. <laughs> I didn't realize how small that knife was. But I'm going to cut them in little quarters so that way they cook faster. So... Like that, and I could probably do this one one more time. And just turn them on their sides and do about three slices and then just into the quarters. And while you're cutting all your other 
potatoes. Um, it's a good idea to have these ones soaking in water so they don't turn pink. So I'm going to get a bowl for that and finish up my potatoes and then I will show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, so now that you got your potatoes all cut and everything, um, I wanna mention the reason I leave the skin on and use the Yukon Gold potatoes is because they're the best potatoes for doing the loaded mashed potatoes because the skin doesn't taste like dirt and you can leave the skin on and it tastes more like the whole loaded baked potato type thing you're going for. So that's why I use those. So anyways, back to what we were doing. We're going to put it on the burner on high and I'm gonna put a lid on it just to, um, so it helps it cook faster. I'm gonna be using um, bacon for the loaded baked potatoes and for the bacon and green beans. I am using two, four, six, eight, ten pieces of bacon. And um, I'm going to take a little under half of them out when they're about halfway cooked for the green beans and then cook the other ones till they're nice and crispy for kind of like bacon bits for the um, for the loaded baked mashed potatoes. So I'm going to cut these up and I will be right back. Now that you have your bacon all cut, you want a uh, just normal skillet. I have my favorite like wok style one and you want the heat on medium high and we're just gonna throw all this bacon in here and it's gonna get really loud. So we're just gonna stir that around and cook it till it's like about medium cooked and I will be back when it's at that point. Okay, so the bacon is the way I like it cooked for the green beans. So I'm going to take out, I'm only doing one can of green beans, so I'm not gonna take out that much. That should be good, maybe a couple more pieces. And then the rest I am going to cook down until they're like little bacon bits because these are going to go into the loaded mashed potatoes. So we will be back when these are done. Okay, so our bacon are now little bacon bits. So I'm going to put them into a bowl and don't mind my um, little Brody's robot that's cruising along on the floor. Now I'm gonna get started on my mac and cheese. So I wanted to show you while I was doing my bacon bit thing, my garlic finished. It is nice and roasted squishy it smells so delicious so i'm going to let it cool down and once it cools down you're able to just like squish it and all the yummy garlic just comes out and i'll probably show how to do it when it gets to that point but right now i'm just gonna let the garlic chill over here with my bacon while my potatoes finish cooking so on to the mac and cheese all right, so as for mac and cheese, I just started the water to boil. When it gets boiling, I will continue with the video. Oh, actually, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing with my loaded mashed potatoes. So, be right back. Okay, for the loaded mashed potatoes, I have this bowl here because I ran out of pans. And I have room temperature stick of butter. I'm just going to drop that in there. And then... I'm going to get to my strained potatoes. So I got my potatoes. I'm just gonna carefully dump them in there, right on top of the butter. And then I'm gonna get some milk. So I have a half a cup of whole milk. And then to make it extra creamy, I'm going to use a little bit of whipping cream. Okay, maybe a little bit more than a little bit. I'm gonna use a half a cup of whipping cream. And next, we're going to add some cheese. And since this is loaded mashed potatoes, I'm going to be adding a cup and a half of cheese. I'm living large, living large. So here's my other half a cup of cheese. And then for the super yummy parts. So I'm going to add my bacon bits. Pretty soon I'm gonna have to stir this because it's gonna get hard to stir. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of chives. And then I'm going to squeeze my um, roasted garlic into the bowl before adding it to this because I don't want to get any skins or anything into this. So I will be right back. So once you've squeezed your little guys into your bowl, you just want to squish them, which it'll be pretty easy because they're nice and soft. 
but they're slippery because of the oil. So I'm going to squish these all up and I will be right back. Okay, so I squished my garlics up the best I could, but I wanted them chunky anyways. So that will do. So I am going to try and conquer this mountain. And once I'm done, I will show the finished product and be right back. Okay, so it is all done. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, it is like so cheesy and garlicky and bacony and just, oh my God, it's so good. And you don't have to add salt or anything because the cheese definitely had enough salt and the whipping cream has salt. So, and the bacon, it, yeah, it is like perfecto. So my water over there started boiling. So I'm going to start on my mac and cheese. All right, so while my mac and cheese is cooking, I wanna prepare my steaks. And the way I do that is I bring them to room temperature and then I pat them dry. And you wanna use some really durable um, paper towels because if you use like super cheapy paper towels, they'll just stick to your meat and you'll have a bunch of paper towel pieces stuck to your meat and you don't want that. So I had a garlic skin stuck to my meat. Anyways, so I'm going to sit here and blot away at my meat, and I will be right back. All right, so to prepare my um, steaks, I like using coarse sea salt, and I just sprinkle it around. Get both. This one's not really sticking very well. I think I dried them too well. Okay, and then on medium grind, or if you like using just regular pepper, you want to just um, sprinkle some pepper on top of your steaks and then pat, well, kind of squish the seasonings in. And then we are going to get our pan ready. Well, we're going to flip, repeat, and then get our pan ready. For doing your steaks, you want them to come out perfect and delicious and yummy. So I'm going to show you a way to do that. You want to add about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of EVOO. I just use this brand. You can use any brand. Um, I find that the same as the really, really expensive stuff. But anyways, um, you want your, oh, you want to use extra virgin olive oil because it's one of the only oils that can withstand really high heats without breaking down and burning. So anyways, um, you want your pan to get so hot that it barely starts to smoke and then that's when you want to add your meat. So once it gets to that point, I will show you and then we're going to add our meat. Okay, so I changed the angle because I wanted you to be able to see the lightly smoking I was talking about. So it's doing that. It's going to get really loud and here goes our steak. Oh, before I put this on, we're going to leave it without touching it for seven minutes. So I will be back in seven minutes. Okay, so it has been seven minutes. And for this next part, you are going to want a tab of butter. It's about this size. My hands are clean. I just washed them. And two partially squished garlic cloves. This whole. So we're going to flip our delicious steak. Whoa! I know it's really loud. Sorry. We're going to put our butter in there and our two garlic cloves. And then you want a good sized tablespoon. And what we're going to do is let that butter melt and get all these yummy juices down here, leaving it over the heat. And you want to pour those juices all over your steak. And it makes it super duper yummy. It gives it a buttery flavor and garlicky flavor and just, oh, it makes it so good. And it also helps cook the edges. So it's a must do when making steaks. So I'm going to continue doing this and I will be back when my steaks are done. So see you in a bit. Okay, so how I make my regular boxed macaroni and cheese super yummy is I add a bunch of stuff. <laughs> So I've already added a half a stick of butter. Here's the powdered cheese. Here's a cup of cheese. And here's a third cup of whipping cream. So we're going to mix this all together. Let me get this all mixed together. 
Okay, so I ended up having to add a fourth a cup of milk because it was really, really thick. And for some reason on the camera, it looks really, really yellow. But it's not really that yellow in person. But it's super cheesy and way yummier than the normal, um, yeah, the normal way they have you make it. So I'm going to put the lid on this and I'm going to do the green beans. And the corn is last because we really don't warm up the corn. Um, so I will be right back. So you just want to throw your green beans in a pan. I like using fresh, but all I had right now was canned. So it is what it is. And then I have my bacon from earlier. So we're just going to cook this long enough to warm the bacon back up and make it nice and warm. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh ground pepper, if I could get it open. Oh, sorry. So some fresh ground pepper, not too much, otherwise my kids won't eat it. And stir it around. And then once it's warm enough, I'm going to take it off and start the corn. Okay, so when I do the corn this way versus corn on the cob, I warm up the pan to where it's hot to the touch, and then I turn the heat off because we're going to be adding mayonnaise to it. And if you add mayonnaise to hot corn, eh, it's not very good. So I add cold corn to a hot pan so it just lightly gets warm. And then I'm going to add a little bit of mayonnaise. So I'm adding a third a cup of mayonnaise. Like, get it out of there. And the rest of my Parmesan cheese, which is about a third a cup of Parmesan cheese. And then we're just going to give it a stir. And it tastes exactly like Mexican corn that you get on corn on the cob. It tastes exactly the same, I swear. It's super yummy. I used to eat this all the time when I was pregnant. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So, that's the way you do it. And it's really good for people that like it but can't eat corn on the cob for any reason. This is a great alternative. So yeah, that's it. Now this is ready. And I'm going to get everything together and then I'm gonna be plating. So I will be right back. Okay, so moment of truth on cutting my steak. So I wanted it medium rare. And let's see how it came out. Don't mind the noises in the background. My son is watching a very weird movie. But well, it came out a little more done than I wanted it, but it's it still got some pink. So, as long as it's not completely gray and completely dead, I'm happy with it. Because when it's, like, completely cooked, it's just, it's so tough and so hard to eat. Oh, over here on the thicker parts came out a lot better. So, yeah, it came out pretty perfect. So, I did my final um, reveal of my steak cutting. So, now it's time to serve. Hey you guys, so I had to do my tasting sitting down because my back is like dead. Hold on, Bubby. Okay, hold on a second. Sorry about that. Um, so here is my tasting. Here's my steak with my hollandaise sauce. Can you see it? It's reflecting off the TV. Um, but ah. Uh. Mm -mm -mm. That is really, really good. Please be quiet. Um, so here's my loaded mashed potatoes. I'm not taking that big of a bite because that last bite was kind of big and it was hard for me to eat. <laughs> mm. That, it tastes like you took a baked potato with all the fixings and like mashed it together in a blender or something is really, really, really good. Here's my better than the box macaroni and cheese. Mm. Way better than just box mac and cheese. Like creamy, cheesy, yummy. And here is my off the cob Mexican corn. It seriously tastes exactly like it tastes on the cob, except for the only difference is you don't get a bunch of corn things stuck in your teeth. So I prefer this like way more than the other way. So anyways, I'm going to continue eating and I really hope you guys enjoyed my video. I'm sorry the ending part was kind of weird and you see my son's feet flying around and I don't even know what he's doing. But, um, yeah, I'm going to finish my dinner. Thank you guys for watching. And 
enjoy, and I hope you guys will try and make this, and I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye.